Well, good morning. And uh, wonderful to be with you all this morning as uh, we're going to take a look at uh, loving God and loving your neighbour. Um, the key thing for this morning I want to look at is, uh, is, is looking at Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. And it reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. Some key components within this which I'd like to unpick as we go forward this morning. As we know we have four Gospels, uh, which are basically a, a composite of the, the, uh, the life of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus. Uh, and within it we have these essential parables which are there for us to actually live our lives and to help us improve our lives. If we look at the four Gospels, they're not really uh, theologically load-bearing. They're not packed with things about what's going to happen when we get to heaven. Uh, but it's just a, it's a central focus about the life of Jesus while he was here on earth and his teachings, what he said and what he did. As I said, they're not, it's not theologically load-bearing. We couldn't really unpack the Gospels to find out exactly what happens in the end times. Yes, Jesus was asked about the, the resurrection and he, he answered that question, but most of it is about his life, about his teachings, about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Now, to understand the, the Gospels, you really have to put yourself and get your heads around what it was like at the time Jesus walked this earth. And also, just looking at the, the early part of Scripture in the, in the New Testament, what it was like maybe 50 years after Jesus walked this earth. And it's difficult because we have to take all of that, understand what it meant to the early Christians, what it meant to the Jews at that time, what was being said in their culture. But then we have to take this word, the word of God that never changes, and apply it to us today in a world that's always changing. So it is difficult. So it's not surprising when we go back over 2,000 years of history that the church is always, in a way, reinventing itself. There is only one church. And in a way, you could say we're not reinventing ourselves, but we're actually more a case of actually looking at how we can be relevant to the world around us. So we have to read the Gospels. We have to understand it. Uh, understand them and then we have to uh, apply them into the time in which we live looking at the cultures so if we look at the culture of the time and try to understand it and then take it today and put it into our culture then living in in the United Kingdom our culture is very different to somebody living in Asia or in Africa or Australia or the United States and it's becoming even more complicated because we're living in this global world where we can see things happening all the time, instantly on our, on our news pages, what's happening in different parts of the world. And we try to understand things happening in, in, in Asia from our own, own cultural understanding of what it's like here in the United Kingdom. The word of God here is in the Gospels. It's historical. It's an account of actually what happened when Jesus walked this earth. What happened? But it's also for us to take the scriptures, take the gospel messages and to renew our minds. Paul says that we have to renew our minds and we have to do that. So the word of God is it's historical here but it's also alive. We read the word of God and through the grace of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit it can transform us, it can change us and that's what it's all about this morning, it's being changed. So let's try and discover what Jesus was actually saying here. He was there with this a lawyer, this man who, who knew the word of God, and, and this man was asking him, you know, how do, you, how do I achieve eternal life? Now eternal life is something, it doesn't just happen in years to come. Eternal life can start today. It's the, it starts when you accept Jesus Christ into your life as Lord and Saviour, and then you have eternal life with Jesus. But Jesus was asked this question by this lawyer about eternal life. And, and Jesus asked the question, Back to him, really. What does it say in the word? You know, you're a lawyer. You're a teacher of the word. What does it say? Uh, and the lawyer came back and he quoted him from the book of Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. So what it said there in Deuteronomy all the way back in the Old Testament is repeated here in the New Testament. Now let's be honest for a second. It's always good to be honest. Let's be honest for a second. 
I mean, it obviously comes in a, a section of scripture which focuses on the Good Samaritan. And this, this verse of scripture is probably so familiar to us that we maybe gloss over it or we read over it without fully taking it on board what it says. So being honest, you know, if we have to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our being, how many of us can actually say 100% that we love the Lord our God with all of our heart? How, how many of us can say 100% that we'd love the Lord our God with all of our soul, which is our free will, it's our emotions, it's, it's, it's us. How many of us can say honestly, 100% that we love God with all of our strength? But this is a commandment given to us by God and repeated, of course, by Jesus. And how many of us can say that we love ourselves 100%, that we love our neighbour 100%? So we may easily gloss over this piece of scripture but it's something we shouldn't move over quickly because it's so important to us. We have the four Gospels, as I've already said, and each Gospel has a different emphasis. For instance, Luke majors in on, on the parables. Uh, Mark majors in on the miracles. And we could go into the others, but let's focus on what we're here for this morning. Jesus has questions here. And we have to understand the question and have to understand the answer. Now the key word is love. Now you could say, well, people fall in love and they fall out of love. But the love we're talking about here is a constant to love. Love requires action. It's not something we get for ourselves, but it, instead it's, it's an expression of love to, to others through sharing and through serving. And the best example that we have of that is Jesus. And how do we find out about that? We read the four Gospels. So we have two components. Loving God. Loving God. But we also have love your neighbour as you love yourselves. So how do we express our love for God? How do we really press in with love to God? Well, we tell him. You know, if somebody knows or wants to know that you love them, you tell them, I love you. You can quite easily do it to somebody, a physical person that you love. So why can't you easily do it to God? Well, we have to say it to God. God, I love you. So you tell him. You can sing to him. And just being in his presence, being with him, that's what God loves. And these are great things to do. And these are important things to do, to love God, to tell him that we love him. To sing, to worship him, to be with him. But they only scratch the surface. We show God that we love him through obedience. By obeying his word. Obeying his commandments. To love your God. To love your neighbour as yourself. And we are told that actions actually speak louder than words. So it's one thing saying it. It's another thing to actually go and do it. And believe it. It's tough. Yeah. We don't always feel like we want to obey what God's telling us to do. But we are here to worship God. We are here to take his counsel. We are here to be obedient. We are then told to go out and do what he wants us to do. And the wonderful thing about loving someone, and especially loving God, is the more you press into it, the more your love grows. The more you experience God. His goodness, his faithfulness. And that's what we want in life, isn't it? There's someone to love us unconditionally. Someone who sees the best in us. So we have to love God. That's, a, that's the first component. But we also have to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. And then New Testament, Jesus said, the greatest command of all is to love your God with all of your heart. But then he added this second commandment. You should love your neighbour as yourself. Love your neighbour as yourself. Tricky one. Because first of all, you've got to love yourself. And in that, you've got to love your neighbour in the same way. So you could say, well, what happens if you don't love yourself? And maybe we'll, we'll touch on that as we go on. But there's something quite important here, because you can't really give away something you don't have. If you don't have love in your heart, then how do you give it to someone else? 
so we all need to accept ourselves first of all for who we are our personalities our imperfections you know knowing our weaknesses but in that knowing that we are making progress that we are going forward we are doing our best because God wants us to love ourselves he wants us to see our identity our identity in him now I've often thought if I ever went on a program like mastermind um, what would my specialist subject be and I think I'd probably go for someone like William Wilberforce because William Wilberforce is somebody who's really touched my life just reading his uh, reading about him but certainly going through journals um, for those who, who know me and know me well I love reading people's journal journals I just love um, going through biographies and autobiographies uh, and in one of the journals I was, I was reading uh, about Wilberforce or one of his own writings there was this particular day when he was out walking uh, walking in the countryside and he was just communing with communing with God and he was just saying to God you know what's what's it all about he, he, he at the time he was struggling with his issues in Parliament but he was as he struggled he was saying to God you know what God what is all of this about and he looked around him and he saw the trees in, in the woods he saw the, the clouds in the sky he saw the, the grass in the fields and God spoke to him and said, this is what it's all about, my creation. Everything that God had created, that Wilberforce knew that God had created something good. So in that, Wilberforce realised that you know, if God saw that everything he was good, was God saw that you know, everything was there to be loved, then Wilberforce must do the same. And it's quite interesting because this was, this was a revelation to him at the time. It was a, a real uh, life-changing experience for him as he went on this walk. It's all about God's creation. Now, if you've ever seen a film about Wilberforce's life called Amazing Grace, the film starts off with this scene with this this uh, this, this cart and this uh, and this horse, horse horses that were uh, pulling the cart. One of the horses had become lame, and uh, the owner of the horse was whipping it, trying to get it to stand up. And Wilberforce intervenes. And protects the horse and in a way you could say it's a strange way to start a film about the abolition of the slave trade but it was something that was deep in his heart you may not know this but um, William Wilberforce was one of the founding members of what is now the RSPCA what about the protection of animals because his outlook was about loving God and God loving him and in that God loving everything around but through him so we have to love God, but we have to love ourselves and we have to love others. We have to love our neighbours. So how do we love others? Because that can become difficult. It can be difficult loving ourselves, as I've said. But how do we love others? Well, let's look at God's gift to us. God's gift to us is life, of course. But God's gift to us is love. And if we receive his gift of love, we then have to release it in our life. But then we have to release it in the lives of others through words and through actions. And the, the act of loving someone or others is probably one of the most ex exhilarating experiences in life you can probably ever experience. You know, we feel that excitement stirring up within us. As the Holy Spirit challenges us and prompts us to make someone else feel loved, to make someone else feel wanted. To make somebody else feel cared for. But as I've already touched upon what it is if you, if, you, if you have difficulty loving yourself. But what happens if you have difficulty loving somebody else? Uh, and I'm sure that probably speaks to, to everyone. What about those people who persecute you? We're told to love our enemies. But what about those people who, in your work environment, may be giving you a tough time? Or one of your neighbours is giving you a tough time? And continually putting you down. Well I found in my life that the key to this is prayer and in particular praying for that person because if you pray for a person especially a person that you may say you don't like and you continually pray for them every day for their protection for their families for their well-being for their relationship with God it starts to change their life of course the most important thing is, 
it starts to change your life. You start to become very protective of the person that you're praying for, even if they're the person who's giving you the hard time. So you could say this person doesn't deserve prayer. But of course, everybody deserves prayer. Everybody deserves love. And as I said, as if you pray for people, it changes you, which is probably the most important thing. It changes you. Your attitudes will change. Your outlook will change. You know, and it's just a wonderful thing just to, to pray for people. But if we had a list of, if I asked you to pray for 10 people, you'd probably come up with a list of 10 people that you like. But what about having a list of 10? How about that? You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. And you may ask, how can I continue to grow in love? Well, you need to devote yourself to developing your walk of love. To love God, to love yourself, to love others. And if we can do this, we will experience a huge amount of blessings in our lives. A huge amount of blessing in your own life. So this morning I encourage you to seek God. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you in your love towards Jesus, in your love towards yourself, and in your love towards others. And he will help you overcome. Yeah, you'll have obstacles in the way. It's a process. It's a process of change. Remember, God is love and he loves you. Amen. Well, we did say this morning that we take questions and Justine's going to join me now. I'm going to move along a bit so Justine can snuggle in. Snuggle in. And uh, let's see where we go from here. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we've had um, a couple of questions already sent in. Um, the first question is, um, who is your neighbour? Who is your neighbour? Well, everyone is your neighbour. You could quite easily say your neighbour, as in the English language, is the person who lives next door to you or lives in your street. But, you know, Jesus made it very clear with the, uh, the, the whole, whole account of, of the, the Good Samaritan that it's, it's those that you come across in life. Now, with, you know, just with the whole evolution of technology today, you know, we are in touch with near enough every single person in every part of the world through technology. So there's nobody who isn't our neighbour. If there's people poor and, and starving in Africa, they are our neighbour. If there's somebody being persecuted in somewhere, North Korea, they are our neighbour and we have a responsibility. So basically everybody is our neighbour. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we've got a similar questions come in from Tim and Laura. So I'm going to read both of them so that you can combine the answers. So how, how do you get the balance right between loving your neighbours and loving yourself? And which should come first? And the other question was, how does somebody have, sorry, how does somebody love their neighbour if they don't love themselves? Well, Jesus simply said, to love others as yourself. He didn't say, go and love others once you've learned to love yourselves. The two go together. The two are a composite part of, they're integral to each other. Love ourselves, love our neighbour. So if we say we can't love others until we love ourselves, we're, we're basically saying there is, there is a third commandment rather than two. Jesus says, you know, we have to go and we have to do these things. But you could say like, well, I hate myself. I'm not impressed with myself. Um, I don't like myself. Um, and that may seem true on many levels. But Jesus wasn't talking about that sort of feeling of love towards ourselves. Um, he was talking about something of a, a reality, something deep within us. At the core of our being is that God loves us. Now, if we take that approach, like I said about Wilberforce earlier on, that we have to, if we understand God's love and that God loves us, then if we look from that perspective, we will start to love ourselves. And in doing so, then we can go out and love, love others. Um, you know, we are God's creation. So it's not a case that we have to love ourselves first and then go and love our neighbour. The, the two are integral to each other. 
we have to learn to love ourselves and that can be difficult you know so many people just do not today do not like like themselves because of other pressures but we have to overcome that you know let's let's ask others for help in their area we need it let's ask others for prayer let's ask others just to to be our friend you know loving ourselves loving our neighbor is integral to each other okay thank you yeah so um i've got another question here um how would you encourage someone who is finding it hard to love a person in their life so someone they might work with or someone that you live with i think you might have touched on this a bit but how would you encourage someone who's finding it hard to love a person in their life so i was just wondering if that was an aim question that loving somebody that you live with <laughs> but um no I've, I've touched upon this already prayer you know being positive in prayer towards somebody if you pray for somebody that you dislike you know, if you bring them before the Lord every day and just ask for God to bless them, it will start to change your heart. And that it does, it, I've, I've done it and it does. It changes your heart, it changes your attitude, it changes your outlook and you start to love somebody. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's really good. It's a um, hard thing to do, but it works. Yeah. Okay, so um, I've got another question. Um, how does this scripture help us to relate to what's been happening in the USA and around the world concerning Black Lives Matter? Right, that's a big topic, isn't it? So, um, loving ourselves, loving God, loving ourselves, loving our neighbour, and how does this relate to what's happening with Black Lives Matter? Um, um, it's, it's interesting, because one of my favourite books um, is, uh, um, I know that The Caged Bird Sings, and that's written by uh, Maya, Maya Angelou, who many people know, a great poet, uh, a great writer, um, a great civil rights campaigner. And, uh, you know, she grew up in, in, in uh, a small town called Stamps in Arkansas in the United States. Um, she was born in the 1920s. And basically she was living at a time when basically uh, persecution of the blacks by the whites was, was the norm. Uh, it was what everybody expected, it was what everybody did. Um, but in that, she grew up um, to be a campaigner for civil rights, certainly for black rights. Um, she worked alongside people like uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, and what touched me, and the reason I read the book so often, as you know, I probably read it about once a year, um, is it just it amazes me that somebody who had such a tough time uh, and was certainly persecuted because of her colour, um, and her, and her beliefs as a child and her, and her, her, her friends were, um, people in the neighbourhood were. It amazed me that she grew up with such love in her heart for other people. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that she says, is, it's, which stays with me, is um, you know, she said that uh, you know, people will forget what you said. People will forget um, what you did, but people will never, never forget how you made them feel. So people will never forget how you make them feel. Um, uh, and then we're looking at civil rights, um, and certainly what's you know, happened since the, since the death of uh, George Floyd. You know, something needed to change. Um, th there was freedom in many parts of the world, but freedom in name only. Um, there was equality, but equality in name only, and not actually in reality. So th there was something which is flawed in, in communities, in our community, which needs to be put right. And often in life, if you need to get something to nudge just an inch or two inches, you need something extreme to make it happen, to push everybody along a bit. So you, you need something really extreme one way to get the vast majority of us to move a little bit. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't uh, condone violence. I don't condone the, 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 just the damage that's taken place, but something needed to change and change is needed. So, you know, if we look at the United States and what's certainly been happening with... Um, What's it's been, you know, it's happening all over the world now? What's the, this knock on effect? You know, you could say, well, this, this should have happened a long, long time ago. Because surely, if we look at uh, certainly in the United States and certainly black Americans who fought in the American Civil War for their rights and they promised their rights, they promised the abolition of slavery, if they would get on board and fight for, uh, for this United States, what became the United States. Um, they fought in two world wars, and it, it, in all of that, um, you would have thought that there's just a, a, a primary, a, a prima facie case that um, earned equal citizenship had already been um, um, been given.
but we're still fighting for it, and they're still fighting for it. So whether it's, whether it's in the United States, whether it's in the United Kingdom, whether it's in Europe, wherever it is, you know, things need to change. The narrative, the story needs to change. Uh, change is a constant, I said that earlier on. Um, so change, things are ch continually changing, but people don't like change. Um, so, you know, in a way we could say we have an overdue awakening of just equal rights, but that's got to be balanced. That's really got to be balanced out because sometimes, you know, you can, people can fight so much for their rights that the people they're fighting against start to lose their rights. So we've got we to gotta balance these, these two out. But there's also this long overdue awakening, a spiritual awakening, which I believe will follow through. Because it's first in the physical and then in the spiritual. So, um, you know, Frederick Douglass said, without, um, without a struggle, there can be no progress. Without a struggle, there can be no progress. So we're having a struggle, but there will be progress. Oh, thank you. Well, I think we're um, over time a little bit. Okay. So thank you for that this morning. And thank you to everyone for joining us and, and listening in and contributing as well this morning. So I'm just going to ask Mike to pray for us before we, before we say goodbye. Okay, just remind everybody from Inspiration that um, we have our Zoom at uh, 11 o'clock this morning. Um, if anyone's watching and would like to uh, join our Zoom, just send, send us a message and uh, Justine will send you the link. But I'll pray. So, um, Father, this morning we just thank you for your word. We thank you for each other. And we know that we have a responsibility and a command to love you, to love ourselves and to love our neighbours. So, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you bring that conviction upon us this morning to check our own heart before we try to check the heart of others. And I just ask that you'll keep us all safe, physically, spiritually and mentally. And I just ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So goodbye and uh, see you all again soon. God bless. Bye. <laughs>